what joint action occurs in the concentric phase of the pec fly exercise. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video we're going to dissect this particular mock question which commonly comes up in the level 3 anatomy and physiology exam and it's a great one to be able to practice complex questions and how you start to break that down. Now before I get started, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you click the little red button so you can get more notifications of videos just like this. And also make sure you check out the link that is alongside this video where you can download more mock questions to continue to test your knowledge. So let's explore this question. It's quite a complicated question because it asks for you to understand three different bits of information in order to understand and answer the question. Now, as we break down the question, you'll notice that we're going to start off with understanding the key terms from the question itself. Then we're going to ask ourselves what we know about those key terms and how they relate together. And then we can use that to anticipate what the answer will be. And at that point, you can then check to see if that is offered inside the multiple choices that you've been given as part of the exam paper. Now, this is a really good strategy to use because it means it allows you to take your time when you're working through your exam. Quite often what happens is that people look at a question, they start reading it, they, then they jump straight to the answers, the multiple choice answers, and then they pick one that they're like, oh, that seems the most logical, or I've seen that one before, that must be the answer. So they start to jump to conclusions very quickly. This le leads to confusion, often leads to learners getting a little bit lost in what they're doing, and it often leads to the wrong answer. And all we need to do instead is break down the question and actually apply the knowledge that we have in a systematic way. So that's why we're going to start off with understanding the key terms first. So let's explore that question again. So the question itself is what joint action occurs during the concentric phase of the pec fly exercise? There are three key terms, joint action, concentric phase and pec fly exercise. So we now know that we need to understand what all three of these things are before we can even suggest what an answer might be. Let's start off by breaking these down. I'm going to start off with the concentric phase. That's the, the key part of this of this whole question is asking that you understand and you can apply your understanding of concentric and eccentric phases of movement. So that's the first thing. What is concentric phase of movement? Now, when you're looking at any action, any exercise in the gym environment, any sort of joint action that we do, there is both a concentric phase of movement and an eccentric phase of movement. Concentric is whereby the muscle is shortening and inside that moment, the load, whether that's our body weight, whether it's a dumbbell, whether it's the machine, something is moving towards the clouds against gravity. And it's our muscle contraction and that shortening that is therefore working to allow that action to happen. So that's the concentric phase is the shortening phase. But we can see that in our exercises because the load is going towards the clouds. Now, to help you remember that, C for concentric and C for clouds, and that will really help you every time. The opposite of that is the eccentric phase, and this is the lowering phase of an exercise. And this lowering phase is basically returning back to the starting position. And as you're returning back, the load is going back down towards the earth. So E for eccentric, E for earth. And it's a good way of remembering it. But this question is asking about concentric phase. So we know it's asking what the lifting phase is, that the initial lifting phase during a particular exercise. Now we apply it to the question and it's asking for the pec fly exercise. So let's have a look at a couple of different options here uh, because there's lots of different pec fly exercises we can do. We could do it with a dumbbell, in which case we're laying on a bench, dumbbells are in our hand. The concentric phase is where the dumbbells are lifting towards the cloud. So we're bringing the shoulders inwards, we're bringing the dumbbells towards each other. If I'm using a cable machine or a resistance machine, I'm in the same position whereby I'm holding handles, but then I'm going to be bringing my shoulders and my hands towards each other. It's exact same motion, even though I'm standing upright. Now, in this case, you might go, but my hands aren't going up towards the clouds. <laughs> That's OK. Look at the weight stack. The weight stack on that machine or on the cable is going up to the clouds. And it's the pulley system that's allowing you to do that. But the joint action is happening in the concentric phase is the same as when we do the dumbbell pec fly. It's exactly the same motion. So that action is this closing here. So we're bringing the hands together in front. Now, that's the key bit of information we need. So we've already 
broken down the question and we've worked out that the thing it's talking about is the concentric phase of a peck fly and we've worked out what that is. We can see it, we can visualise it and we can do it. Now we've got to apply it to the next stage of the question, which is the joint action that occurs at that point. Now, whenever you're talking about joint actions, there's two parts you need. You need to know which joint it's referring to and you need to know the name of the action. So the joint has to be the shoulder. The elbow isn't moving because it's an isolation exercise. It has to be the shoulder that is generating that motion. So the shoulder joint is going to be the joint that we're gonna to refer to, but what action is it doing? We know it's not flexion because that's in the sagittal plane and that's bringing the arm up in front. We know it's not extension because that's bringing it back down. We know it's not adduction and abduction. Um, instead, it's gonna be horizontal flexion or horizontal extension. And that's because you're basically drawing a line along the horizon as you bring your arms inwards in that pec fly motion. So horizontal flexion is as you bring your arms in and horizontal extension is as you bring your arms back away from each other. So let's now apply that to the actual question. What joint action occurs in the concentric phase of the pec fly exercise? So we go pec fly exercise. I know the exercise. What one's the concentric phase? That's me bringing my hands together. What's the joint action that occurs? Horizontal flexion of the shoulder. Now you can look for your multiple choice questions on the suggested answers that they give and you can go, oh, horizontal flexion of the shoulder. You don't have to guess. You don't have to get confused. You don't have to get lost. And you certainly don't have to get the question wrong. All you need to do was break it down into some pieces, take your time, explore what you knew about each of those concepts and then answer it. So if you need more help with your level two or level three anatomy revision, and it can be complicated, you've got to know lots of different pieces as you bring it all together. And it's only when you know the little pieces that you can then answer the question, just like we've done today. But if you do want more help with your revision, please do check out the link that is with this video and it will take you to our level two and level three revision boot camps. These are going to really help you break down your understanding so you know these concepts in a way that you can then apply it to answer these questions. But also more importantly, later you'll go on with confidence to be able to work with clients knowing that you have the knowledge behind you. So if you'd like to find out more, please do click the link that is with this video. And that's also where you'll find some more mock questions to help test your knowledge. I would love to know what your big takeaway has been from today's video. All you need to do is to drop a little comment below and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.